Hello and welcome to The Red Menace, we're a comedy news podcast from Australia and Indonesia. My name is Chris Bolson. And I'm Alison Ho. This is take three of a today's <laughs> attempt at making a podcast. We have had... Oh dear. First take was six hours ago. We have had some considerable technical issues. Yeah, I um, don't know what the problem was. <laughs> I know that technology is bad and made by bad people, and it's here to punish us for our arrogance as a species, and me specifically for my arrogance as a man. Yeah, well, um, that sounds about accurate. And it, yeah. I, to be fair, like, to add on to my problems of, like, the technical side of things, also my setup right now is pretty precarious because I am sitting on the floor using the bedside table as a microphone stand. Oh, you're doing um, that again? Yeah, because I haven't yet moved into a place of a desk. I will be doing that in two weeks' time. Okay, really so looking forward to that. Two more podcasts with this setup before <laughs> <laughs> I move into a reasonable accommodation. Listeners, if you were thinking, like, hmm, the audio quality's been kind of interesting recently, I wonder how long that'll last for. You now have an answer to that. So. <laughs> Yeah, look, at least this place is quieter than the place I was staying before. There's no children that is around. True. And this well, I saw a gecko in my room earlier, but they're not nearly as noisy as the ones in Jog Jakarta were. Oh, so geckos, just like old times. Yeah, just like old times. So, you know, in two weeks' time I'll have a desk and can make a proper setup because I'll be staying in that place for nine months. In the um in the break between over the break between takes one and three. Um, I had, I went to the store Peter Alexander, which for those who aren't familiar is a pajama store because I broke my slippers, um, by literally tearing the sole off one of them <laughs> accidentally. How um, did you manage that? Well, the, it was coming off at the front a little bit. And what I did was I walked through a doorway and the front of the sole hooked in like the bottom <laughs> of the doorway and my foot kept going and the sole stayed still yeah, and that's they disconnected. Um, that's something that happens. Yeah. Um, but I realized in Peter, my shopping experience in Peter Alexander, I look like such a huge freaky perv because all I do is I go around the store feeling all of the nice fabrics just sort of one by one. The fabrics like, do feel really good, though. I think that's yeah, the problem. But, but and I you know what else a, is bad, Chris? Because Peter yeah. Alexander smells good, too. Yeah, the clothes smell everything. kind of vanilla -y. So you're like feeling the fabrics and sniffing the fabrics and it's like yeah can you imagine if you went to like an eb games or a game spot and instead of, and you went around and you looked at all of the game titles and you systematically rubbed every single <laughs> one and sniffed every single one it would not be okay it wouldn't well, be an appropriate <laughs> behavior when I bought my television, obviously I made sure to give it a good rub before I bought it, just in case. You can never just, be sure. Just to make sure it feels good. To make, make sure, sure it's smooth, feels, sexy. Feels good to touch. And you also need to check if it has a genie inside. That's super important. <laughs> Do televisions generally have genies? Um, no. Mine didn't, unfortunately. Um, it would be, I'd be, I wouldn't be making this podcast if it did. Um, yeah, I would probably do, be doing something a lot more interesting if I had a free genie. If I had a free genie, I would already be a very successful rock star. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> I would have platinum <laughs> records if I had a genie. So, like, take from I that what you I don't know if I want to be, like, that high key, though. No, I do. I, 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 I would then, like... Then people would probably suspect I had a genie. Because, like, how did this talentless hat get to this point? You know, I wouldn't you know, just, like live on the down low, but like really, really successfully on the down low. You know how some people, you think about like what you want to do with your life and like what you want your career to be. And sometimes people are like, I just know deep down in my heart, I want to be like a doctor or I want to make people feel better or I want to be like a lawyer or whatever. Sure. Um, I figured out what mine was a while back and it's not awesome, which is that deep down, I just want to be acknowledged for the creative genius that I firmly believe that I am. <laughs> And I'm not confident that's no going to happen. No ego at all, hey. No, so I'm not confident that's going to happen ever is the issue. So I yeah. think I might just be unfulfilled forever. Thank you, existentialism. Well, if life is like The Sims, you can just do a cheat and change your lifelong goal. If someone figures out how to do the mother load on reality, I'd be super... Actually, I'm pretty sure it's tax fraud. Anyway. <laughs> do you that's have a true. 
Do you have a well, story for me, Alice? You did. You did get spoiled this one on one of our earlier recording sessions. But let's kick it off um, again. Here's a here's a trick. I've forgotten what it was. So, <laughs> well, look as I as I mentioned in our, our previous recording session, which our uh, listeners are not savvy to, I do have a lot of animal related stories this week, as is kind animal. of very on brand for me. I think, particularly since at the moment I'm living in Indonesia and there are cats everywhere. Like, you I, step outside and you are surrounded by cats. It's a really they, nice experience, actually. Okay, because I was going to be like, are they good cats or are they mean cats? Well, all cats are good. So, I don't know, some cats bully me. Yeah, but these cats are like, you know, if they want to bully, they, they bully someone like, you know, they've, they've got the whole world to bully. They're not like True. cooped up in a house with like limited options of who they're going to bully, you know. So they could be bullying literally anyone. And if they chose to bully you, that would mean you're pretty special. So you're asserting that um, when a cat, it's like a house cat bullies you, it's because it's decided that today <laughs> it has like urges that it needs to work out. So yeah, it's going to exactly. say, so it looks, it comes up to you and says, fuck you in particular. And then it just does mean things to you all day because like it has to pick someone and you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All cats have to bully someone. And the less choice there is, the more likely it is to be you. But when they've got the entire universe to choose from because they're a free-roaming cat that don't need no human, then, you know, the chances that they're going to choose you to bully are a lot slimmer. Huh. Fair there enough. you go. That's cat science. I'm a cat yeah. scientist. So um, what's the story? <laughs> so anyway, I do have two cat-related stories. Um, <laughs> one is a bit of a throwback to a story we'd covered earlier relating to the panthers, the panther oh, yes, situation yeah. that is ravaging Australia. Of course, it's a, an epidemic. An epidemic, exactly. And this is from the Newcastle Herald by Damon Cronshaw. And it says, Black That sounds Panther. like the name of a Disney villain. <laughs> Dame, Damon Cronshaw. It does kind of, actually. My name is Lord Damon Cronshaw, and I'm here to take all of your puppies. Not even not even Cronshaw. It's Cronshaw with an oh, N. What... Cronshaw? Oh, my name is Earl Cronshaw, and I'm here to take all your taxes. Uh, Black Panther seen dropping from a tree at Mount Sugarloaf, says the headline. Mount Sugarloaf? Yeah, Mount Sugarloaf. Sounds like a real sweet mountain. That was a lame joke. Please continue. That, that, is, that was quite lame, and I'm not going to... Um... I could think... I heard the title, and I was just like, oh, that seems like a ripe potential for a joke and then i just whiffed it you just um, biffed it big time but mount it. sugarloaf is in fact near newcastle oh okay you learn uh, something new every hence day. why it's being covered by the newcastle herald i guess there's not much to do in newcastle aside from look for panthers because it is something that comes up quite frequently in this paper yeah as someone <laughs> whose extended family largely lives in newcastle can confirm very little to do newcastle herald which is actually a genuinely pretty good publication has a lot of panther-related stories for something which is usually a pretty good re- a pretty good publication. I will say that the only really good thing to do in Newcastle, in my experience, is to get drunk in your uncle Bruce's backyard and eat prawns that your dad's peeled for you. That's like my Newcastle experience, <laughs> and there's not a lot else to do there. Well, I would say my Newcastle experience is probably quite similar, given that I've had family living there, and that's. Pretty much the only reasons I went there. Yeah. Uh, one of my Newcastle experiences is hanging out with my niece and her drawing on me quite <laughs> extensively in Texter. So that's my fun Newcastle activity for anyone looking to go there is find a baby to scribble all over you in Texter. You can get some sick tats from Newcastle. Yeah, exactly. Some sick baby tats. Uh, not tats of a sick baby, but sick tats from a baby is what no, I No, that mean would there. be a... I can't imagine that would be a cool tattoo to have. No, it's just like an exactly. ill baby. Yeah, I think that would be quite problematic in some ways. Yeah. Uh, but it says here, I'll get into the story. A black panther has been sighted at Mount Sugarloaf. This guy's name is really good, by the way. Chris Trees, 35. <laughs> <laughs> He's a weed dealer. He has to be. <laughs> he is absolutely a weed There's dealer. There's no way he's not a weed dealer. With a name right like Chris, bat. you know. Chris, it's what... Chris is, I mean, classic druggy name. Chris Trees. <laughs> oh, it's just so, it's so Chris on, per- Trees. on point. 
Yeah, Chris Trees, 35, was riding his mountain bike when he spotted a blue, a big black cat drop from a red gum tree. It was easily the size of a Rottweiler. It had a big black bushy tail. It scared the shit out of me, said Chris of Macquarie Hills. In all seriousness, none of these people know what a panther looks like because he has not just described a panther. He's, He's described, described a, a large cat. cat. Yeah. Panthers don't have bushy tails and they're bigger than Rottweilers. <laughs> they're the size of panthers. They're yeah, substantial how, how creatures. Yeah, are Rottweilers? Not panther-sized, and from my knowledge, panthers are like tiger-sized. I'm going to Google Rottweiler just to see a picture of it to get it in my head. I haven't seen a dog in a while, so I'm kind of a little bit unsure as to the size of dogs at this point in time. <laughs> okay, I can give you a pretty good description. Think of how big a panther is. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got it in that. my head. Smaller okay, than that. sure. Like maybe half of that. <laughs> okay, I'm Googling Rottweiler size. This I want to gonna, see a picture You are going to get some weird fucking images, Alison. I want to get a Rottweiler standing next. Rottweilers are pretty big. They're big boys. But panthers are bigger. So I yeah. will give you that. So you were correct Pan- in your size panthers description. panthers are bigger. <laughs> panthers are bigger than Rottweilers. <laughs> I don't, don't, date the... <laughs> a, don't date a human. Date a panther. You'll get oh, a better dear. experience. <laughs> don't date a Rottweiler either, I guess, on that note. No. I go to the top of Sugarloaf and ride my bike down. It's about two kilometers along Sugarloaf Range. Ro- uh, it's about two kilometers along Sugarloaf Range Road. That is such a tongue twister. It, is. it also Range sounds Road. like the name of e- a street from either A Riverdale or B somewhere a serial killer from a fairy tale lives. Sugarloaf like, Range Road. Yeah. yeah, because Range makes it sound like a little bit spookier than just Sugarloaf Road. It's some Hansel and Gretel shit. You have to follow the trail of treats down the Sugarloaf Range Road to get to the house where you get cooked and eaten. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this description goes on for quite a long time about his sighting. So I will, I will finish reading this and then we can discuss this. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's about two kilometres along Sugarloaf Range Road. There's a turn off after the first small aerial tower. I was coming down there on Thursday at about 2.30 p.m., I was probably 200 metres along. I've come to a stop because I needed to adjust my front brake. This is a very, very detailed description. And any time I hear a detailed description, I think automatically think it's not true. I also <laughs> automatically think that they really needed to bump up the word count of this story because this is all inconsequential. It is very inconsequential. If I was, like, taking the best grab from this, I wouldn't have used all of that. No. <laughs> I looked up and saw something drop from a tree about 25 metres away. The head shape was definitely the shape of a cat. The body size was like a big black dog, but it had really long cat-like tail. I couldn't see its eyes at that distance. He said the creature stood up and faced me. I thought, what the hell's that? That looks like a panther. He neglected... Chris Trees neglected to mention that he was fucking blazed off his <laughs> face at this point. Well, he, you know you know what they say, like, you shouldn't be using... Don't get high on your own supply. Don't get high on your own supply. Don't smoke and cycle. It's very dangerous. And Chris dangerous. Trees was breaking both of those laws. Exactly. Not getting high off your own supply and, you know, staying sober while cycling. And so he didn't want the Newcastle Herald to know that because he knows the Newcastle Herald doesn't like people getting high on their own supply. No, the Newcastle Herald is very straight-edged. Everybody knows that about them. <laughs> they, their office Christmas parties are very dull. Uh, and... yeah. It's perfect for me, perfect for my type of people. <laughs> uh, after about five seconds of it staring at me, it turned back around and bolted the other direction. It moved really fast, running off through the bush. He watched it run into the distance before it disappeared into thick scrub. He called his sister immediately afterwards, telling her, I don't know if you should come pick me up or not. There's a cat here. (laughs) It's so dangerous. (laughs) She said, why didn't you take a photo? And then the sister said what everyone was thinking in this situation. But he said, I was scared to move in case it wanted to chase me. In case it meowed at me. My my running theory is that he didn't want to, like, he couldn't be bothered riding his bicycle home and he needed an excuse to get picked up by his sister <laughs> that didn't make him sound like a wuss. 
So he's like, oh, there was a, like a, a panther in the bush or something. You think he could have picked a more convincing animal? He could have said like a <laughs> dingo or something. Like, well, we know that people don't believe dingoes are going to attack and kill people. No, that's true. Dingoes are a myth created by the government. Um, we know you will go to jail for a long time if you claim that your loved one was killed by a dingo. And then it turns yeah. out that, in fact, your loved one was killed by a dingo like you had claimed all along. But now it's a big running joke. And it's kind of like quite tragic, really. It is, but that's but why he couldn't use dingo in this situation. It's a very good way to get a movie made about you starring Meryl Streep doing a really bad accent. So, like, if that's something that you want... <laughs> why that's... would you put Meryl Streep doing a bad accent in an Australian role and not, like, Tony Collette? Um, I, it was back in the day, and I don't know if Tony Collette existed. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know how old Tony Collette and or Meryl Tony Streep Tony Collette are. is pretty old. Don't that's rude to Tony Collette. But she, that's you know she's still she, she's still she's got a national it. treasure, Alison. How she's dare still you? got it though, Chris. I didn't say she didn't got it anymore. I, I saw said, Hereditary. That movie owns Tony Collette. She is a great actress. I love Tony Collette. She was robbed of her Oscar for that movie. Um, all of our listeners, you should watch Hereditary. Its tone is very different from this podcast, but it's good. Oh, <laughs> uh, look! The, he said here that. He, this guy who was telling this story, had previously heard of big black cats reported at Lithgow, which is in the Blue Mountains west of Sydney for our listeners, but hadn't heard reports about Mount Sugarloaf. However, Herald readers have reported panther sightings at Mount Sugarloaf. There's also reported sightings at Minmi, Wall's End, Munmura, Swansea, Morissette, Waii, Freeman's Waterhole, Kurikuri, Cessnock, Dungog, Singleton, the Watergun Mountains, Madawi, and Stroud. I just felt the need to read that so that people could listen to a whole bunch of Australian towns. Legit, (laughs) half of those are places where my extended family lives or has lived. (laughs) So, like, I'm starting to think that maybe this is a Puxty-based conspiracy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm starting to think that Perhaps, yeah, it's it's all your family who's reporting these sightings of panthers. Yeah, this is actually my grandma is the cyclist in question, <laughs> is the weird part. <laughs> your my grandma, grandma is Chris Trees. My grandma actually, is secretly fair, weed dealer Chris Trees on the side. Chris um, Trees does sound like a made-up name. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're being approached by the cops and you're a drug dealer, and they're like, oh, can I see your ID? So, like, oh, sorry, mate, I, I, left my, I left my ID at home. I'm Chris right. Trees. What's, what's your name? Oh, I'm Chris. Um, Chris. Chris Trees. You say, <laughs> staring off into the trees that are, are put um, in front of my you. My name. My name is um, Tom. Tom Cocaine. And um... <laughs> <laughs> my name is uh, Gregory Dealer. <laughs> oh, that's so Actually, it, it's like a car car dealership reference. The name's Head. Meth Head. <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, by the way, all of the rest of this story is rehashing the panther stories that we have been over in a previous episode of this podcast. Um, Nothing would bring me more joy <laughs> if you and I were completely wrong about this and there had been a panther escape from the zoo like a decade ago that's just been <laughs> roaming like the, the forests of New South Wales ever since. It would Look, be so delightful to me. One day, one day when we're rich and successful podcast people... We should do like a panther hunt in the forests of Newcastle. And that can be an episode, a special episode to come. I'm thinking we're going to we're gonna we create are... a, a Kickstarter to make our panther documentary. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> and it's just us camping out, looking for panthers in the forest. And because I know that the best way to get hits on a movie is to make it a very similar title to another movie. So we're going to call it Black Panther do- the Documentary. <laughs> And just see what happens. Well, we did call our previous episode Block Panther, uh, as, that's I, true. as I remembered. That's true. The, that's a good option. So that that's the name, good our, SEO. that's the name of our documentary. Um, shall I find another story? Yes. Um, this one was sent to me by my sister, um, and it's from Seven News. And when I first read the headline, I laughed so loudly and violently that um, it, like, it took me a second to recover. Okay, I'm really keen to hear this headline. 
Um, man who thought he bought first house furious after it turns out to be a 30 centimeter strip of land. <laughs> now, can I be honest that I did read this and You've I really this love one? this story? Yes. How this is fucking very good relatable is it? to my property prospects in the future. Exactly. Um, if you're feeling a bit anxious about buying your first property, take some comfort in knowing that you'll probably do better than this bloke. South Florida man Kerville Holness, a first-time auction bidder, thought he just landed an absolute <laughs> steal after his $13,000 bid won the online auction. Would you uh, not feel suspicious about the fact that you bid $13,000 and you won? I feel like a property is the kind of thing you want to look at in person. It's like, you'd, I wouldn't buy shoes online. I want to try them on first. I want to try on my house before I Yeah, buy exactly. It. You I want to, like, eat, walk around, I, see if there's any ghosts or, like, spooky smells or anything like that. Exactly. I wouldn't eBay a house. Um, <laughs> fortunately, unfortunately for old Kerville, his villa, Villiers, turned out to be a strip of land measuring 30 centimetres by 30 metres. <laughs> <laughs> it's only worth $72. <laughs> now, there's um, a lot of, like, good uses for it that I did read in the Facebook comments of this, which I really, really support it. Okay, if you want to bring some of those up, I will not be opposed to that. Well, for example, like, using the 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter area to build, like, you know, huge columns to build a sky house above the other houses, that was a oh, good use. Oh, that's fun. I like that. Because surely they <laughs> only own so much of the vertical space. Yeah, exactly. Just make it like... up into, like, you know, I guess it's like... The further you go up into the sky, it's like international waters, right? Exactly. That's why I mean planes are allowed up there. And, like, yeah, you can do exactly. anything with plane. <laughs> the, airspace is, the airspace could belong to you. Now, the other theories that I saw were people trying to, like, come up with ways to, in fact, get the owners of the houses to buy back that land. Hmm. One of the was, like, just using that strip of land right in the front near the mailbox to sleep nude 24-7. That's until, very fun. Because it's your land. What's what's especially fun about this is you'd think, so it's 30 centimetres by 30 metres, so it's like a long, thin strip. It's a long, thin strip. You would expect that that has nothing on it. You would be wrong. What it in fact is, is, so there's these two adjoining villas, so these two houses that are connected together, and there's a garage in the middle, and this 30 centimetre strip is like half taken up by this garage. So like... He now owns a very small portion of these people's garage. And he's talked about, um, if I'm vindictive enough, I can cut right through the garage wall (laughs) and the home to get my airspace. But what use would that be to me? Well, why don't you do it, buddy? (laughs) I think that would be very funny. I think that he absolutely should do that. Well, it's on his land. Exactly. And he can charge them rent if they don't want it to be cut through. They can either pay $100 a month rent... Or they can buy the piece of land off him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a story for me, Alison? Sorry, I'm eating a chip. Yeah, no, I can hear that. And all of our many, <laughs> all of our many listeners can hear that too, which is super cool. <laughs> They're getting yeah. a great ASMR crunch experience. <laughs> and om, om, om. I can do like the, the packet rustle. That's a good ASMR experience for our listeners. Someone That's for just, free, by the way. Someone just got a profound sexual thrill, so I hope you're happy <laughs> with yourself. They really enjoyed hearing that. And here we go. Here's another ASMR chip experience. I'm going to, like, snap the chip in front of the microphone. Okay, that was a lot softer, but you might hear that hey. chip crunch as well. Hey, Alison? Yeah. Do you have a story for me, Alison? <laughs> Dude, uh, this is another animal story, actually. It's not the other feline story. Yeah, okay. Um, but it is related to animals eating. And really, the only thing I wanted to to read from this is the headline. Um, because the, it just seems quite a rude headline about this animal that live science is talking about. Okay. The headline just says, This weird animal eats rocks for breakfast. It's like, come on. <laughs> Be a, be a this fucking weirdo eats just rocks all the time. What a fucking idiot. It's eating rocks for breakfast. What a and I mean, it's like ass. a fucking slug thing. So, <laughs> like, I don't know what people expect slugs to eat, but, you know, a slug eating rocks for breakfast. Give it a break, Laura. Come on. Laura is the name of the journalist here, who is quite mean to this poor slug, which just enjoys chowing down on some rocks. 
Um, but that's not the story I want to talk about. This next story is from the Bendigo Advertiser. Okay. And there's not much to this story either, but it is a funny story to exist. Australia Post fires delivery driver after urinating on Bendigo front porch. Oh, that's a choice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, read away. I'm into this one. <laughs> You're into this, this story. Sh- this, is, this is our bread and butter. Let's get into it. Urination. Public urination. I'm not sure I want that to be our bread and butter, but these kind of stories, you know, this is great. The Red great Menace, content. a public urination story. <laughs> uh, there is no name attached to the person who wrote this story, but there is a great, like, grainy, grainy photo, which was, you know, a screenshot from the video which was shot on this person's security camera. So it says, an Australia Post delivery driver has been fired after he was caught on CCTV camera urinating on a Bendigo front porch. 3AW footage shows the driver urinating into a pot plant after attempting to deliver a parcel. Firstly, I'm shocked that this guy attempted to deliver the parcel because that's never something that's happened to me with Australia Post, I must no, say. That's, um, if anything, I think this guy should be applauded for delivering for going the parcel to the porch. <laughs> yeah, he actually he went- bothered. He went to the house and he didn't just bring the ticket that says, please go to the post office and do it yourself, buddy. He even gave them a little bit of extra stuff that they didn't <laughs> ask for. Yeah, they didn't order that, but he gave it for free, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he watered their plants for them. What more can you want? <laughs> the footage shows the driver urinating into a pot plant after attempting to deliver a parcel. I've already read that. A representative of the home's occupant. The home's occupant wasn't available for comment in this story, apparently. This person's got a representative. Hmm. Told 3AW that CCTV footage automatically began when someone came to the door. He said that this meant the occupant got a text message with the video. Oh, God. (laughs) Can you imagine you're just, like, at your job, and then you just receive a text message of some guy pissing in front of your door? That's very excellent, and I like that a lot. (laughs) I mean, we've all received some weird text messages in our day. I had a partner who once, who was a nursing student, who out of the blue text messaged me a picture of a skinned goat's head that she was dissecting. And that was... Um, <laughs> That's quite like a... Satanic, a sudden, I'd say. Yeah, a satanic. That, yeah, that's a, probably an accurate word to describe that. Yeah, so we're not together anymore. Um, but <laughs> it... <laughs> she's, with, she's with the Dark Lord downstairs now. Exactly. Um... But yeah, like, here's the thing. (laughs) There's a 100% chance that this footage is going to end up on the internet somewhere, and it's going to be the weirdest porn ever for someone. It is on the internet, Chris. It's right here embedded in the article itself. Oh, okay. Well, then the weird internet porn already exists. So thank you. Of the guy urinating. And it is quite grainy. So it's not like a really fun experience, but you can see I'm describing the video for you right now. Yeah. He tries to knock on the door and no one answers. He notices the pot plant. He goes over and he undoes his fly. He does his business. What a wild response to seeing a pot plant. <laughs> that guy must have a real fun time whenever yeah. he goes to a nursery. <laughs> like... It's, like it's, it's like a weird thing that he has, like a, a kind of Pavlovian response when he sees a pot plant. He immediately needs to piss in it. And And then he 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 just does up his fly and and walks away. He gets to the nursery and he just dies and has a heart attack on the spot (laughs) because he just can't handle the pressure. He's like, oh my God, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to get through this without pissing? (laughs) He sees some trees and his dick just explodes. There's like (laughs) nothing he can do. (laughs) Uh, So Australia Post has obviously commented on this. Uh, And it says, Australia Post apologised for any distress caused to the customer and reached out to them. We expect much better than this, and we won't tolerate this kind of behaviour. As a result, this person is no longer delivering for Australia Post, a spokesperson said. Now, for me, it's clear that the type of behaviour that they don't tolerate is not the pot plant pissing. It's It's actually going to the door to deliver it. They deliver the parcel, and that's unacceptable. "Mm, you you knocked on the person's door and you walked up to the porch. You didn't just put the slip in. 
that's unacceptable behavior. We're going to have to let you go. The He gets called into the office of like the head postie, um, who I'm going to call Pat. Um, and yeah, then, of course. And Postman Pat says to him, now look, Gerald, you're making the rest of us look bad by going up to this door and actually delivering this parcel. <laughs> How do you expect the rest of us to live up to that standard, Gerald? <laughs> it's, it's, it just starts off with, now, Gerald, I saw the video. And Gerald just, like, hangs his head in his hands. He's like, I couldn't help it. Anytime I see a pot plant, you know, he's like, this isn't about the pot plant, Gerald. Gerald, don't talk about that sort of thing at work. That's not appropriate. I want to talk about your parcel deliveries techniques, Gerald. <laughs> and, and it becomes like a hot fuzz kind of situation where he gets That's sent what to like I was a small thinking town. Of, yeah. And then he, he over <laughs> and then he kills like twenty people. Because <laughs> he comes over, he finds some conspiracy in that town. What a good movie. Yeah. I wanna watch Hot Fuzz after this. Um I probably will watch Hot Fuzz after this. <laughs> is there any more to this story? No, not really. The guy pissed in the pot plant and got fired. All right, let me see if I can find some stuff. Um, this one's quite good. So this also is from 7news.com. I frankly don't remember who sent me this. Statistically, it was probably Marianne. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Marianne. Um, this one's from 7 News, written by Andrea Carden. Um, Pitbull hijacks police car, steals beef jerky. Oh, yeah. Police responded to a call for an aggressive dog running loose Saturday night in Kilgore, Texas. When the officer arrived, he thought he might be able to capture it by opening his car door and coaxing him into the back seat, which was caged in. The officer accidentally left the driver's side door open as well in his hasty attempt to catch the elusive pub. The dog apparently decided it would much rather be in the front seat that caged in the back and jumped inside. Um, When the officer tried to get him to back out, he became aggressive, so the officer slammed the door shut, trapping him in the car. (laughs) A dispatcher heard strange sounds coming from the car over the radio and asked what was going on at the scene. Bork, bork, bork! The police officer sent this picture back to the station, which is of the dog in the car with, like, a bright flash reflected in the window. Back to the station to the dispatcher who commented that the dog did not look happy. The officer replied, he ain't and neither am I. <laughs> Um, so then the dog stole his beef jerky and ate it. Um, Good. And that's literally the entire article. And <laughs> <laughs> frankly, a... frankly, good on the dog, hey? Right? That's a good grift. If it was, if I knew it was that easy to steal a police car, I would have done it ages ago. If I just, if you could just start balking and get in the car and eat beef jerky. And presumably this dog didn't go to jail. No. I, I'm what... guessing the dog didn't go to jail. Well, I mean, there is no such thing as a dog jail, as far as I'm aware. Well, my first genie wish is going to be to become a dog so I can do crimes without going to jail. I respect that. Um, yeah. This story doesn't have the legs that I thought it would. Do you have another one? <laughs> <laughs> it is a good story, though. I it do is a like good story. dogs. I just don't think there's any more we can add to it. I think it just no, is. No, I mean, it's just, a, it's just an excellent story. Yeah. Uh, let me just sort through what I've got here. Well, I've got, I've got like a bit of a mummy drama story, if you want to get into that. Okay, I'm into that, because I want to know whether you mean mummy is in mother or like to- entombed pharaohs. Well, I wish it was entombed the pharaohs now, but this is about mothers. And like, to be honest, this story is just like a bit of a launching off point for what I think is an interesting, an interesting phenomenon in our society of online moms, which is what this story kind of delves into a little bit here. Okay. Uh, but this is from news.com.au, and it says, Mum gets caught in the middle of the parking space note war. An innocent shopper was caught in the crossfire of a mummy war when she came across an angry note exchange on the dashboard of her car. Okay. It's, it's like next level passive aggressive notes, but yeah, let's get impressive. into what actually happened. A Brisbane, a Brisbane mum was caught in the crossfires of a vicious war between two strangers over a parking space this month. And their weapons of choice? A scrap of paper and a ballpoint pen, of course. The North Brisbane mum shared her bizarre experience on a mother's only Facebook group earlier this month, explaining her partic- peculiar trip to a local shopping centre in Shermside. My daughter and I got caught in the crossfire of the mummy wars today, the woman explained. We're at Shermside and I parked in one of two Parents with Prams car parks. After completing her shop, 
the mother and Dirtle returned to the shopping centre car park where they found a double-sided note slapped against their car windscreen. I didn't write, nor was I the target of the original note, she explained, but it seemed the recipient of the first attack was convinced she had written to them, so this poor woman was lumped with a pretty brutal response that sparked a heated discussion amongst the group members. So this is a very long-winded way to say that the woman went to the shopping centre and got a note on her car that wasn't for her. It was for someone else. Okay. And the note was quite interesting. Uh, it said, Earlier in the day, a furious mother took it upon herself to write a rage-filled note in blue ink littered with spelling mistakes to the unidentified <laughs> person who parked in the, a pram park in which she demanded that they be more midful, followed by a smiley <laughs> face. I think everyone could stand to be a little bit more midful. We live in such an ex- a world of extremes, and I think everyone could just be a little bit more midful, myself included, to be honest. So, yeah, that's my whole joke. Please continue. So, <laughs> thought I would write, R-I-G-H-T, you a little <laughs> note. So maybe next time you park in a pram park, you may think twice, the note said. The author alleged the recipient had pulled her car into the pram-only parking space just before she could nab it, and then proceeded wait, to get wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. Now, this is probably <laughs> going to show my own ignorance, but car and pram, not the same size. I don't. Well, the, the car, a car park for parents with prams, Chris. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was somewhere you would park a pram, just like a little, no. you know, like a motorcycle sized parking spot, but specifically well, that... <laughs> for. You put the baby in the pram and you push the pram into the spot and you turn the lock on and then you go and do your groceries and you come back and get the baby when you're done. I don't see. Yeah, you so leave the baby like outside in the in the pram. In the small I really like that idea lot. actually. That exactly. would actually solve a lot of problems. Right. I might consider having no. I wouldn't consider having children anyway. But like, if that was you know a potential thing to do to just leave your babies in the car park while you go and do everything you want to do. Maybe more yeah. people would have kids. I just need somewhere to be able to put my baby while I can go and have a smoke. Is that really yeah. so much to ask? <laughs> while I'm... I can go and, like, do some weed dealings. Exactly. I have to sell my products, Alison, and it's not yeah, appropriate for wares. a child. It's not appropriate <laughs> for a child to be around when that happens. Yeah, it's like, so... look, I just wanted to sell my wares without the presence of a child because it, it makes people uncomfortable. And I didn't want to pay for a babysitter, so if I could just have a designated spot to leave the child for a few hours, that would be super good. <laughs> so the note, the note continues, right? So this basically what's happened now is that this is the first attack. Someone has okay. written a note uh, to someone. It's, it's quite passive-aggressive. It says, please be more midful. Thought I would write, R-I-G-H, you a little note, so maybe next time you park in a pram park, you may think twice. You pulled into the pram park. By the way, pram park is always in quotation marks there. Just before me and then proceeded to get out without children and you have no child seats. I'm a mother of two whom relies, R-E-L-Y apostrophe S, on those parks <laughs> as I have a double pram and a child with special needs. You're inconsiderate. You're in- what? It should say inconsiderate, I think. It says, your inconsideration was appalling to other mothers and basic human decency. <laughs> basic. <laughs> That's the human decency that a basic bitch has. <laughs> it's quite like, I, okay, I don't, maybe it's just I'm a bit of a pushover, but I don't think I'd ever be like game enough to write like a mean note and put it on someone's car. I because as someone who doesn't so... have a car, I don't want to, like, risk someone running me down with their car in the no. car park. Also, it's so long and complicated when she could have just written, fuck you, Vicky, I hate you. Like, it would save so when much time. she could time. have just dobbed her into fucking, like, parking security and yeah. got them a ticket or something like that. Exactly. She should have said, I needed to leave my baby here while I went and did the shopping. Can you please get yeah. this car out of there? <laughs> Now, what I'm imagining now is, like, it's like The Sims, where you just put the baby down on the floor. <laughs> so the, the baby Allison, parking is just a series both, of babies sitting on the floor. We both know that you light the baby on fire, so I don't know that's a good <laughs> comparison. Point. I don't think you can light the baby on fire in The Sims. That's probably for the best. I've never um, tried it, but it's I because wouldn't. I don't want any babies in The Sims anyway. So when they become, like, a baby, I automatically age them up to child. 
Because at least children can, like, get food themselves from the fridge. That's fair. Okay. So, then we get to the, what actually happened here, the, the main crux of the story. So then the person that got that note writes a rebuttal note and puts it on the wrong person's card. <laughs> but it says, if you please thought see, that was... <laughs> please see the graphs I've provided in Appendix A and B. I would like to yes. demonstrate the financial disadvantage caused by your economic sanctions. So, this woman, uh, this journalist, Rianne Dutron, has done like some non-linear storytelling here, as you can see. It's we've so started good. off with, like, she received the note, and then we've gone into, like... What prompted the note? And now we're into the rebuttal. It's like I'm watching Westworld. It's so We've good. gone back to where we started from. But if you thought that was brutal, wait for this response. The recipient of the note definitely wasn't taking the criticism lying down and pulled out a <laughs> black pen to scroll a message to her aggressor. I love that they're colour-coded. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know who is so which helpful. person. Uh... If you wrote this note, you should know I do have a car seat and I was picking up my grandchild, you self-righteous twat. (laughs) (laughs) What country is this in? This is Australia. Okay. Well, it's Queensland. It's not really Australia. It's not Brixton. We don't say twat here. It's not a thing. (laughs) That's like not even a passive-aggressive note at that point. It's just a straight-up aggressive note. Oh my god, it's like, if you wrote this, you bloody twat, how you dare you? You bloody piece of shit. And I by mean... the way, the note was written on the same piece of paper, it was just on the other side of the paper. <laughs> it's so efficient. <laughs> it's really yeah, I mean, at least it's, it's zero recycle. waste, right? It's zero exactly. waste. Exactly. <laughs> and then it was like, yeah, the unfortunate mum who was caught in the middle of the warring parties told the Facebook group that people should never make unfounded assumptions about others, no matter what the situation looks like. Wait, how was the middle mum exposed to this? I'm the conf- middle mum received this note and she had nothing to do with it. So it was put on her so- car? Someone just saw her car and assumed it was her who wrote that note. Oh, that's so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next time I... So I've had cars parked in my driveway of my apartment complex and people have left notes on, like, cars of guests and people have parked, left notes on those saying, please do not do this. So what I should have done <laughs> is written fuck you Vicky on the notes and then just slid it under a random door in my apartment complex because that's functionally identical to what's happening here. <laughs> time at my old apartment in Macquarie Park, which was a piece of shit, that apartment, by the way. Of course. Um, That's not relevant to the story, really. But I had a friend over, and my friend had parked her car in front of someone's driveway downstairs, which is not ideal. No. And then the person who, presumably whose driveway it was, came up and, like, started bashing on our door really, really angrily. And, like... I was already relaxed and sitting down, so I couldn't be bothered answering the door, so I got my friend to answer the door. <laughs> oh, no, Alison. <laughs> That's not the correct but response. Here, here's the funny thing, right? So my friend, this is the first time my friend had been to that apartment, and she didn't live in that apartment. And the person who was shouting at the door was like, I've told you so many times not to park your car in front of my car, and every night I hear you here having loud parties... And this, I'm like... That definitely sounds like you, so... Yeah, well, firstly, my friend is not me, who lives in the apartment. Secondly, like, I don't have a car. And thirdly, I don't have friends to have a party with. Well, see, Alison, so... what, you, what you've been doing is you've been walking in front of his driveway, and that's not <laughs> okay. And then you're I've loudly... i just been standing there. You're loudly partying by yourself watching Netflix, and that's just not... <laughs> That's not on, and I can't have that. So I am going to perhaps I like have like have all my make my sim invite all his friends over for a party, and I like have the volume on loud so it sounds like I've got people over for a party. Uh, you've got your headphones turned up a bit too high, and you could hear it through the walls. <laughs> <laughs> you just couldn't afford the high quality ones; they leak sound a bit. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And they leak enough sound to make it sound like it's having a real life party in there. So I might as well not even be wearing headphones. That sounds like a music video. Like you see someone on the train put their like headphones in and get out their phone and press the button. And then just everyone starts hearing like, oots, 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 oots. <laughs> and it's just a fucking 
fucking sick dance party starts and all the lights so it's start going. Like, I, perhaps I couldn't even afford headphones, so what I've just got is two subwoofers and like used like a headband <laughs> to like attach them to my head. You are dead now. You have serious <laughs> brain damage. <laughs> yeah, but that's probably why I've been standing like outside the garage just standing there doing nothing. That's true. You're in a fugue state because the subwoofers is strapped <laughs> to your skull. Exactly. Because you'd basically given yourself electroconvulsive therapy without intending to. Right, exactly. A little bit of a PSA. That's actually very helpful for some people with serious mental problems. But um, you, in this case... But don't strap subwoofers to your head. It's probably not the best way to do that. No, get a doctor to strap subwoofers to your head instead. That's much Yeah, exactly. A licensed professional who's licensed in subwoofer strapping, and then they can make sure that you're not going to break your neck from having heavy subwoofers. Um, I am going to come up with one last story that was sent to me. This one's fairly old, actually, but I've never okay. never had the chance to bring it up because it always gets pushed. Um, and if I don't say it now, I never will. Um, well, fair enough. This one was sent in by Marianne from a lad Bible. Um, <laughs> okay, another esteemed publication. I think Marianne just reads Lab Bible a lot. Um, I think she probably follows Lab... Well, I don't even follow Lab Bible on Facebook, but I always get Lab Bible posts. I think they hardcore promote their posts. So... This was written by Dominic Smithers. Head teacher who had purple dildo and lube in office banned for life. Why do you have that? A head teacher who stole thousands from his school and had drunken sex <laughs> sessions in his office. I'm sorry. <laughs> a head teacher who stole thousands from his school and had drunken sex sessions in his office has been banned from teaching for life. Oh, I, I can't possibly see why he would be banned from teaching for life. James Stewart was jailed for four years in 2017 after he was convicted of defrauding his school out of £103,000. <laughs> I hate this guy. <laughs> the 74-year-old was head of Sawtree Community College in Cambridgeshire for nearly... I'm sorry, 74? <laughs> yes. He's a nasty old man. <laughs> for he's nearly... a seedy old dude. For nearly 30 years, earning £120,000 a year, but splashed his cash on expensive food and skiing holidays. At the time of his conviction for fraud, the court had heard how officers discovered an inner sanctum within his office, which oh, contained no. which contained a large purple dildo, a clitoral stimulator, penis-shaped straws, and a fridge full of champagne. Um, what? <laughs> it sounds like he's just having hen's nights in his back office. Maybe that's where he's been, like, substituting his... Like, he's been stealing the money from the school and then trying to pay it back because he feels guilty by hosting hen's nights in his back office. That's a very real possibility. And according to... I I should be his legal defence because that's what I would come up with. According to the Mail Online, investigators also came across Watermelon Lubricant, a game of kinky charades, and a copy of the Kama Sutra. Um, (laughs) I can't imagine what kinky charades possibly is. Like, it sounds horrific, but... Maybe that's just showing how uncool I am. But um Yeah, I I, I don't know. Charades is kind of bad enough as is. Um Stuart was using the space to carry out an affair with his PA, who I'm not gonna name for obvious reasons. Now, two years after his conviction for fraud, the teaching regulation authority has banned Stuart from taking up a position in a school again. I think that's probably for the best. I I think that's probably fair. Um, so there's a considerable stash of booze in this dude's office as well. Um, there's a photo, there's several, bo- like many beers, there's a big old bottle of what looks like bourbon, a bottle of what looks like gin, a few mixers in there, just in case you are... Okay. Jeez, hmm. he's trying to cater to all the different preferences of alcohol. Exactly. Um, so basically this dude had a little mini sex dungeon in his office, which I would respect if it wasn't at a school. Yeah, I mean, fair enough having a mini sex dungeon in your office, but I, I, I don't think a school is the right place to do that. No, exactly. Be an accountant, probably be an accountant. I guess all accountants probably have that. Well, from look, what I, I know about accountants, I think that's the only way you're going to attract a, a mate as an accountant is if you have a little sex dungeon. Because, like, <laughs> I don't see how else you're going to make someone interested in you. I'm sorry if any okay. of our listeners are accountants. Who? Here's a, here's a question. 
So in which profession do you think it's most commonplace to have a sex dungeon in your office? Um, I mean, definitely professor at like a cool private college is a big obvious one. Um, but I think there's a lot of them. I think CEO, obviously, of any company, doesn't matter what. Um, that's just kind of an expectation. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg has one. Mark Zuckerberg, he actually doesn't have a sex dungeon. He just has a room full of swords. Um, and that is his <laughs> sex dungeon. And that's, take that's, from that what like, you will. of a sex dungeon for him. Yeah, he doesn't feel sexual attraction to humans. He feels it more to, like, weapons of violence. Um, <laughs> Particularly, like, um, samurai swords. Because, actually, like, he just really likes Japan. He's, He's just really, really into interested Japan. in Japanese culture, and that's why he has a samurai sword. Yeah, a traditional office. Japanese... Co- and there's actually, like, some, like, sexy anime girls in there as well. Um, shout out to a different <laughs> podcast that you should all listen to, one called Behind the Bastards. It's about evil people throughout history. They have an episode about Mark Zuckerberg, um, and they do reveal that he is, in fact, a sword guy, and that he used to go around and... J- jokingly in inverted commas threaten his employees with a big samurai sword <laughs> um so he's a super Mark cool Zuckerberg, dude i mean like that's a very interesting fact which i didn't know but it, it does confirm my like fan theory that mark zuckerberg is a weeaboo which is something that i've really <laughs> thought in my head <laughs> yeah it tracks um it kind of like it, it just kind of he gives me weeaboo vibes yeah i get that um, I'm not sure. What <laughs> profession do you think is most likely to have a sex well, dungeon? that's a really good question. Definitely Wall Street people. I oh, feel 100%. like that's probably... Like, I don't know. I don't everything think they I get... know about Wall Street, I learned in The Wolf of Wall Street, so... That's not so much a dungeon as it is just, like, what the office is like. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, that's true. It's not, like, hidden. It's on show for everyone to no, see. No, like, one person's, like, calling up the stock exchange and saying, bye, 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 and next to them, two people are having sex on the desk. So, like, it's just kind of the atmosphere of the In a pile of, of like, place. cocaine is just kind of floating around. Yeah, exactly. It's just a constant drug-fueled orgy. You know, like, there's a, those, like, little things that you can plug into your wall to, like, stop mosquitoes? Yeah. I don't know what's, like, inside it, but... Perhaps in the Wall Street offices, they've got that same thing, but with, like, cocaine that just flies through the room. <laughs> so at all times... So what you're suggesting, times, Alison, is like a, a sprinkler. Cocaine mist. A sprinkler or a... <laughs> that cocaine just shoots out of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, at all times. Not dissimilar so can... to the perpetual weed smoke cloud at music festivals. So, like, it probably has a similar yeah, effect. Yeah, it's probably, probably quite similar to that. Um, but Wall Street people aside... I feel like it's probably something the the dirty bastards in Canberra have. You know what I think it is? Like, Barnaby Joyce definitely has one. Again. And that's, that's not something I want to think about. He but. strikes me as the kind of man who has a sex swing hanging up in his living room for all to see. <laughs> and when guests come over, he talks about it a lot. Like... <laughs> And I don't mean to defame Barnaby Joyce, but I just think he's a nasty <laughs> freak, and that seems like something he'd be into. He's a nasty boy. And I'm not saying there's he... anything wrong with having a sex swing. I just don't know if it should be in your living room and you have guests over. I, I don't know. I think the problem there is that you're Barnaby Joyce. I think that is the the prime problem in that situation. That's very fair. That's very objectionable <laughs> as a core concept. Um... As, like a, as a personality trait, <laughs> being Barnaby Joyce is kind of like a... I would say it's probably, like, a deal-breaker for me. If someone says, yeah. hi, my name's Barnaby Joyce, I'd probably be like, oh, sorry. That's a big you know? relationship deal-breaker for me. I had I was dating someone, and they were, like, a super cool lad, a really great job. They were, like, amazing in, you know, that way. They were really good-looking. But it turned out they were Barnaby Joyce, so unfortunately I had to call it <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you found out a bit later in the relationship that he was Barnaby he Joyce, was Barnaby and you're like, Joyce. oh. It was a real oh, issue for me. He's like... Look, Chris, I've got something to tell you. I'm, I'm Barnaby Joyce. Joyce. And you're like, oh. And then the mask came off. And oh, and, and God, then how like, I did oh, no. weep. I wept for many a moon. Um, do we oh, wanna, dear. Do we want to call it there? Um, yeah, let's, let's end it there on that note. Thank you, everyone, for listening to our podcast. Um, follow us on Twitter or Instagram at, at Red Menace Cast or Facebook at The Red Menace Podcast. Um, you can buy our merch, our sick merch, at tpublic.com. I'm wearing one of our hoodies that arrived the other day right now because I like to self-promote. Um, I'm not wearing a hoodie because it's very hot. I respect that. 
Um, Where I am. <laughs> and, you know, smash that like button, ding the bell for notifications, send us the birth certificate of your firstborn son, send us your hair. Um, send-, uh, send us your fingernail clippings because that's something that I like to collect. Yeah, make sure that we have all of your bank account details and PIN numbers um, and just, like, smash every button on your keyboard until your keyboard breaks. Um, yeah, sounds a- sounds good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening, folks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Good night. Good luck. Best wishes.